the differing views in Christianity is a feature of Christianity, not an error. This is how it's supposed to be. It, it, Jesus knew that once he left, this whole process of this 2,000 years since then is a process of converging to a point of unification, right? And, and that actually makes me more excited because now in our current time with technology, we actually start now to have the tools to do that conversion. Because if we yeah. go like go back 30 years ago, you could have all these silos of Christianity and nobody knows what everybody thinks. That's right. right. That's right. The, the technology now has put all of, in this, all of us in the same space. And now we're seeing the variations of thought processes. And now we kind of get an opportunity to collide. The goal of these collisions, though, is to it's a process of unification. Right. As we the more we collide, eventually certain things will start rising to the top. Eventually, mm. there's going to be a, a, a unification that's happening because it, it will happen. It's going to be messy, but it will happen. Welcome to Kingdom Over Everything. I am your host and chief fire igniter, Shea Bynes. And I have back with me the very first guest of the Kingdom Over Everything podcast, my friend, my brother, Amish Johnson Jr. He's also the founder and pastor of Faith Community, which is both a physical and virtual church. Uh, and I'll let Amos share a little bit more about that. But Amos, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. Yeah, I'm glad to be back, Shay. Special side for our conversation today. Yes. All right. So break down this whole thing real quick before we dig in on faith community and what you're doing kind of in person yeah. and online. Yeah. So um, so some of you guys may know from uh, maybe from the first interview that I started as church for entrepreneurs. I did that for since 2014. So we're like a decade in there. And so but two years ago, I also started a physical church in Atlanta. And I was basically pastoring a virtual church and a local church. And then last year, I felt God was like, it's time to merge these into one thing. And with the merge into one thing, it facilitated I had to have a new name. So Church for Entrepreneurs made it made sense when it was online only, but it didn't make right. sense when we were in person, right? So online, it attracts people in person and repels people, right? So- <laughs> So, so really, so in order to kind of be our tagline is one church. So to be yes. one church, I have to seamlessly take the best of the digital and the best of the physical with the goal of discipling believers anywhere in the world. Right. And so we have a presence here in Atlanta and we have a bigger uh, global presence. As well, and we are a church that focus more on discipleship. You know, Jesus gave this great commission, go out and make disciples and then teach disciples. We don't focus as much on the making part, but we focus on the teaching part. You know, some ah, churches, okay. what we call like secret churches or attractive church, they, they focus on like going out and bringing a whole bunch of new people. We kind of yes. focus on taking the people that's already know Jesus and actually teaching them the ways of Jesus. That's kind of that's how good. I, I focus. That's good. Uh, curious, before we get into some other topic for today, what what have you... What have you learned in terms of walking this thing out? Because you've been doing it physically with a group of people, yeah. but then online with a different group of people, not the same group of people, but a different yeah. group of people and walking people through discipleship, that teaching discipleship, what have been some of your kind of key learnings that you're, that yeah. you're uh, experiencing so far? I think a key learning that I've experienced so far, I started doing this new thing. It's not new, but it's new to me. It's called a spot yeah. preaching. Where What's like it expository preaching, expository preaching. All right, okay. So like what I used to do for like my entire life is I, I'll pick a topic and I would find all the scriptures that relate to that particular topic and I would preach a topic. Right. But expository preaching means you literally take a entire book of the Bible and you go line by line through a, uh, through a, through okay. a Bible, book, book Bible. So since January, we're going through the book of Romans and this Sunday we'll be in chapter seven. So it's going to take all year to do one book, yes. right? And so yes. what I found in terms of discipleship, expository teaching is better for discipleship because when you're going through a book of the Bible, you can't skip over stuff. You kind of got to mm. go through all the nuances, everything Paul is saying, all the everything context. Is, all the context. So you can't, you can't just skip stuff. When you do topical preaching, you could end up with a person who's strong in a one particular area, 
but weak in other areas because as yeah. ministers we kind of gravitate to stuff we're interested in right and so like for me i am still even though we don't call church entrepreneurs i'm still about success and vision and leadership so my messages could kind of be all one-sided right, right. <laughs> Fair. right it's like i had this joke it's like i used to grew up listen to this group, rap group called epmd yeah and, and when they broke up you can hear the distinct different styles and separate they were not that great separately but together their styles together kind of sound good together and so yes. i think as preachers we have a certain bent towards certain topics and if we just just do topical preaching we could end up in a space where we'll build a strong congregation in one area but they may be lacking other stuff and so mm. this expository preaching kind of forces me to cover stuff that i wouldn't normally cover gotcha right? and so yeah i still do topical stuff like on the podcast yes. stuff, but sunday is kind of dedicated to like every week we're going through the book of romans we know what we're doing I'm not making up. I'm preach every Sunday. I'm not making up. I'm right. cool about it, but I know exactly what was happening this Sunday, right. the next Sunday, and the next Sunday. In fact, for the whole year, we know yes. what we're doing. <laughs> right? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah. I like that. I like that. So we ended up on this podcast again. You know, you and I had been. Uh, we, you and I, talk all the time. But mm -hmm. you know, the last time that we spoke on this podcast, we were having a conversation about how unity. We were talking about the prayer that Jesus prayed right? In the book of John about how we may be one, right? So we went through that whole scripture and we were talking about how unity doesn't require agreement. That was our whole conversation. Yeah. Because obviously if we're called to unity in the body of Christ, if agreement on all the things was necessary, we would never achieve unity. <laughs> Correct. So we... You had sent me a text the other day and you were talking about how you'd been spending some time around like mindsets and just things that will help us to walk that out. And so I thought it would be cool to kind of walk through what you've been learning, perhaps even teaching or whatever that's helping to kind of kind of help us to create some mindsets that allow unity yeah. to be more accessible yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to us in mindset and in practice. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to let you it. like just like dig in and let's just go. All right. So first, let me start off by talking to everybody who's listened to this. I am going to be because like the reason Christians argue about stuff is that people got different thoughts on what theology means. Theology is basically the study of God. And yes. just name the elephant in the room. I'm going to give you a perspective. Right. And because I'm giving you a perspective. It's still places where people may disagree with the perspective. Sure. So, but just make sure that just keep that in mind. So I'm not saying this is it yes. for all time, all places, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, let's keep that and in so, mind. So wait, hold on, on on the thing around theology. So theology being like the study of God and like his relation to the world and humankind, right? So it's almost like it's what people's perspectives are about who God is and also the relational dynamic between yeah, God yeah. and, and us. Earth. Yeah. So like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the vertical or and the, the horizontal, world, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, let's go. All right. So first of all, and we, we, we limit to just Christians. So there's 2 billion Christians on the planet right now. Right? 2 billion. 2 billion Christians, right? So this is not an American thing. This is not a European <laughs> thing. This is like, this is a world thing, right? Yes. And actually the way we look at our Bible, it's supposed to be like 8 billion Christians, right? So we, so 2 billion is not even how many more we're supposed to have, right? Now, there's a study that looks at an entire world of Christianity. And the mm -hmm. study is showing that there's roughly... 45,000 different denominations globally, right? Now, they, they come to that number 45,000. They may take like a Methodist church and they may break it up as, as multiple types of Methodist churches based on where they are in certain regions. That's how they get right. to the 45,000 number, right? In the United States alone, there's like 200 different versions of Christianity, right? <laughs> so... So just keep that in mind, right? There's thousands yeah. of versions of Christianity floating around. And every time a group of people see something differently, they split off and create another thing, right? Right. Now, the first church split happened within the first 300 years of Christianity. Mm -hmm. so, so Christians disagreeing about theology is not new, right? <laughs> it's, just been, it's just a progressive thing. Yes. And there's also studies that show that even if you go to a church, there's a good chance that you don't agree with everything your church says, 
right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so most people, they go to certain church denominations, but they don't actually hold to all the values of that one church. So yes. theoretically, and we're talking about the average church size being like a hundred or something like in, even in a small group of like a mm-hmm. hundred some odd people, exactly. not all in agreement, not all in agreement. Right. They're, they agree enough to go together to church. Yes. But there's, there's nuances here. Absolutely. Even like, like right now between me and my wife, we got, there's certain points of doctrine. We don't see eye to eye on, right. Yes. Even, even the husband wife situation. Right. Mm-hmm. And even kids to f- parents, you don't see eye to eye on certain things. Yes. So, so, so theoretically, there could be over two different versions of Christianity floating around here, right? So that so probabilistically, there's a good chance you're going to be engaging with Christians that have slightly different views of you, right? Yes. So we need yes. to know how to handle this dynamic and don't let it crush us, right? Because like, you could go to the thought, well, if there's so many versions of Christianity, then none of it's true, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you could get go to that that part, right? Or you. Could I think go some to, people do. Yeah. Or you could yeah. go to the stream like. I got to make everybody see it the way I see it. Right. And that's not going to work either. So we got, we got to live with this tension that, yes. you know, people are looking at this book, this text, and they're grabbing different stuff from it. Right. Yes. And how can that make this whole thing true when we got its followers believing wildly different things. Right. right? Um, and so with that said, I want to go through some mindsets, how to process this. And how we can work together as believers, if we don't see it the same way on some things, right? Right. Okay. And so, so let's let's. I'm a, I got some scriptures here, so you okay. know it's not just me thinking. And my I'm pulling this out of nowhere. So look yeah. at John seventeen twenty one. Right. It okay. says, "I pray that they will be one." This is Jesus praying to God. I pray yes. that they will be one, just as you and I are one, and you are me, Father. And I am in you and they may be in us so that the world believe you sent me. So yes. what that means, Jesus kind of prayer for the church was the church would be unified. Right. Mm-hmm. So which means that that's our goal. Right. The goal is unification. And yeah. since the goal is unification, that's the thing that Satan's going to fight against the most because that's mm-hmm. actually the goal. And what Jesus is saying here is that a unified church is the symbol of that he is real. Right. That is a simple. So that is the game we're playing. Yeah. Right. The game yes. we're playing is unification. Right. And so I think some people, I think we don't believe that that's the game. Right. It's not perfect doctrine, but it's unification around the faith. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, if you look at the ministry gifts in Ephesians four, you know, the apostles, mm-hmm. the prophets and all those people. Yes. Let's read their job responsibilities. So this is okay. in Ephesians four thirteen. Mm-hmm. Or twelve somewhere. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work, to build the church, the body of Christ, and gets this. This is going to continue until we come into such unity of our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Yes. So the whole purpose of what we're doing now, while we're living on the planet, is we're we're converging to a point that we are unified in our faith in our knowledge of Christ. Now, unifying the faith doesn't mean we agree on all points of theology. That scripture is saying we're unifying our faith around who Jesus is, right? Yes. That's, what we're, that's what we're trying to unify around, right? Yes. Whether or not we're going to wear sandals or no sandals in the church, we're not trying to unify around that, right? So, yes. so which means that the, the differing views in Christianity is a feature of Christianity, not an error, right? Mm. Right. So which means that this is how it's supposed to be. Jesus knew that once he left this whole process of this 2000 years since then, it's a process of converging to a point of unification. Right. And and that actually makes me more excited because now in our current time with technology, we actually start now to have the tools to do that conversion. Because if we go like go back 30 years ago. You could have all these silos of Christianity and nobody knows what everybody thinks. That's right. right. That's right. The, the technology now has put all of in this, all of us in the same space. And now we're seeing the variations of thought processes. And now we kind of get an opportunity to collide. Yes. Just, right? <laughs> I mean, there's a whole lot of that going on. <laughs> that, right. Just look on social media. There's, there's, there's a collision. Right. Yes. Lots now, of it. Yes. The goal of these collisions, though, is to 
it's a process of unification, right? As we, the more we collide, eventually certain things will start rising to the top. Eventually mm. there's going to be a, a, a unification that's happening because it, it will happen. It's going to be messy, but it will happen. Right. So, I, so I think the first mindset we got to have is that this is how it's supposed to be. Right. It's not that God wanted it to be this way, but this is, this is what it looks like. This is how you do the thing. Right. <laughs> this is how you do the thing. So embrace, embrace the little bit of tension that's yeah. in there. You have to embrace it. It's, al- it's almost like yeah. saying, I want to go to college, but I won't take any tests. <laughs> right. No, like this is this is this is the process. The process is yes. the late nights, the studying, the tests, the quizzes. <laughs> That's just the process. Right. 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 And Jesus knew that, and he prepared for that by putting ministers in the church with the purpose of guiding us through this, these collisions. Mm. <laughs> right. So, like, he knew this was going to happen. So it's not like he's not shocked. Right. There's no yeah. no shock here. Right. Um, yes. I have I have this saying that a lot of people um, try to help God out a little bit too much. It's like, you know, uh-huh. I say like, Hey, if we do this, we're misrepresenting God. Or if we do, if we show that we don't, we're arguing over stuff, we're mis- misrepresenting God, but it, it doesn't matter. Like this is, this is what's going to happen. Right. This yeah. is just, just, just what's going to happen. Right. I th- it's the, I think the manner in which we do it is the difference. Right. Cause I mean, yeah, how we do the, it, the idea of iron sharpening iron and let us reason together. Mm-hmm. All of those things are, are wonderful things, but the way in which we do it, the heart and the mind, which is why I'm glad we're having this conversation on like kind of the mindset around it, the heart and the mindset and approach we take to it is important. And I suspect that our core beliefs around it is then what creates how we engage other people yeah. mm-hmm. in the differences. And, and also how important we think those differences are yeah right yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and so like yeah. you know so like i was you know i think we give more importance to some differences that's not really that important mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. so ephesians 5 21 and this pause me and f- submit to one another out of reverence to christ so yes. this is a commandment to like everybody in body christ right the commandment is that one of the mechanisms of coming to unity of faith is a level of submission to each other Mm-hmm. And I like to tell people submission doesn't mean agreement, <laughs> right? So if you think about right below these verses, he's talking about the husband and wife dynamics where the wife is to submit to her husband. And so that dynamic is what Paul is saying here that we need to do to each other, this submitting mm-hmm. dynamic. The submitting dynamic doesn't mean we agree with each other. That means that we are putting our will underneath somebody else's will. If you look at God and Jesus, they didn't agree on the cross, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was in the garden, was like, is there another way to do this? Is there another way? <laughs> right? <laughs> but not my will, but your own. So which means that yeah. I got one will, you got a totally different one, but I'm going to do yeah. what you want to do. That's the mission, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So so even Jesus and God, they had differing thoughts here about what should happen here, right? But Jesus submitted his will underneath the Father's will and actually did what needs to be done, right? So as believers... There's a level of submission to each other that we're going to have to engage in, right? There's going to be things that you think are right, but they think is wrong, but you still may submit to their way of doing it, right? And it's going to be happening vice are versa, you, right? Are you talking about the context of um, leadership or you're talking about in the context of peer dynamic? Like what, Just people what are general. you saying and what does that practical application look like between, let's say to people who are just in relationship with each other, like they're, they're brothers in Christ, sisters yeah. in Christ. So, so, so this is talking more about brothers in Christ, not leadership. So submission okay. to each other is not submission. We should submit to leaders, but this is more about to each other type of thing. Yeah. Right? So what does practical application of that look like in disagreement from your perspective? Um, it looks like, so, so, so me and Shay, she started kingdom driven entrepreneur. I started church for entrepreneurs, right? I felt that what, Christians really needed was more spiritual teaching. And so I started a ministry. Shea felt yes. like Christians needed to really get this understanding of working with God and have meetings mm-hmm. with his, and do it through a business context. Right. We got mm-hmm. two different approaches to that. Right. And yes. so if we had tried to do something together, how could we have managed that tension? Right. Mm-hmm. And, so, mm-hmm. and so, and so the way we managed that k- tension is that we created two separate institutions that yes. complements each other and yes. we don't 
you know, and even though I don't necessarily do it the way you do it, you know, this way I do it, we're kind of submitting to each other in this marketplace of ideals where we're mm-hmm. able to collaborate. Right. Yes. I'm not yes. nitpicking all her doctrines. She's not nitpicking all my doctrines. So like <laughs> we're right? we're focusing. <laughs> yes. So so these, these are type of level submissions we got to do. Right. So yes. um, it could be as simple as um, you guys want to go to a movie together. One Christian believes that radar movies you shouldn't do. Another Christian thinks, OK, uh, how are we going to do this? And scripture will say the person who thinks the radar movie is OK will submit to the person who think it's not. Right. So the way the Bible is usually should look at submission, you're, the, the stronger is submitting to the weaker. So whoever has more rules, the one who has less rules are submitted to the person who has more rules. So you're saying so when you said strong and weak, you are saying strong is the one who has more rules. Weak is the one who has less rules. Is that yeah. the is no, that no, no, no. Strong is the one who has less rules. Weak is the one. Who oh, has OK. Rules. Right. That OK. Way. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, gotcha. so so we can see that. Let's 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 skip. Let's see how that that plays out. Yeah, Romans fourteen one, it says, "Accept other believers who are weak in faith, and don't argue with them about what they think is right and wrong." Right. So Paul is making this analogy that those who are weaker in faith have more rules. Got right? it. Got it. Got it. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It is have it's have more rules. You think about it. Yeah. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. So you can't right. eat this. Everybody gotta be vegetarians. You know, it's like there. You gotta you gotta worship on the Saturday. You can't do it on Sunday. It has to be this right. way. You know, you can't do it. And so the more rules you have, Paul is saying you're weaker in faith. Got right? it. Got it. Okay. And then he's saying and don't argue with people about that. <laughs> yes. Don't argue yes. with people about that. Should you have tattoos? Should you not have tattoos? We're not arguing about that. Right. And then verse 10, it says, why do you condemn another believer? Why do you look down on another believer? Right? Remember, we all stand before the judgment seat of God. And in Mm -hmm. verse 13 says, so stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way you cause your belief, you, you, you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. So how this looks, if we take the radar example, if I'm a believer who believes rated R movies are perfectly fine to watch. Right. If I try to get my other friend, like Shay thinks you can't, can't go more than PG. If I mm-hmm. try to keep getting Shay to come get this rated R movie, I'm causing Shay to stumble now. So I'm using my freedom in Christ, trying to get her to do this thing. And it's going to cause her conflict internally. So I'm now introducing confusion in her life by trying to get her to do something she feels is wrong. Right. And so if you go to Romans uh, 14, like 23, Paul says that if you do something that you think is wrong, you are personally sinning. Right. So if Shay right. thinks going to a radar movie is wrong and if she goes, she's now committing sin. Mm-hmm. And I've helped her commit sin because I've used my freedom that collided with her rule system. And now I'm trying to pull her into a space she's not comfortable with. And then when she does it, now she's committed sin, right? Which is why it was important on the front end when you said submission doesn't require agreement because you can submit to that, but I'm not going, I'm not trying to force you into a situation. You know, if, if that's, if that's your belief and that's your conviction, I, I, you know, I submit to that. Go ahead. You know, we're not going to, I'm not going to place you in a position of having to operate against that. Yeah, I exactly. don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah. And you don't even have to tell them you don't, they, they don't agree. Yes. You don't even have to tell them you don't right. agree. So like, so like right. sometimes just telling people I don't agree creates an argument, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes it's like you hear something and I, this is what I do. I said, that's interesting. <laughs> I just, that's interesting. I just leave it at that. Because the moment I say I don't agree with that, but you can do it anyway, now I open up a conflict yes. that has to be addressed. Yes. So we don't have to actually tell everybody things we don't agree with. Right. Right. You can use wisdom here. It's like, okay, that's just to right. say, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, so, so right now, one controversy now, we got a lot of people in the black community who are denouncing Greek organizations. And there's a uh-huh. tension here around, are you pledging allegiance to this? Are you pledging allegiance to that? Right. And so, so there's a tension here. Right. Yes. And so to me, like, that's interesting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Right. You know, so I can say that. Without yes. trying to create a conflict between these brothers and sisters, like how they're seeing this, 
Right, 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 right. That's right. interesting. Yes, that you see that. Unless someone was looking to have that conversation, <laughs> yeah, with, with me in you. private, like, hey, can you can you right. tell me your thoughts on this? Can you ideas? Right. Okay, now that's another that's another story. Let's talk through. This. Right, they've invited you into this conversation mm -hmm. and an engagement. I think that's yep. part of. I think that's part of it too. When I think about like like significant, you know, theological differences um, or doctrinal differences or whatever, when those things come up, I'm not really. I find those conversations interesting in your, in your language, but it's like one of those things that I'm not looking to, I'm not looking to start those conversations per se, but I would mm. have or certainly broadcast those conversations or even assert my perspective in an area where no one was asking, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Unless it's something that is connected to my assignment that it's, I'm supposed to be teaching, et cetera, yeah. then it's kind of like, I just kind of leave it out there. But if someone invites you into conversation, then that's different. Because then it's like, yeah. now we can have a really great dialogue. And yeah. if it starts to go off the rails, I can go back to, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at least there was an invitation to begin that conversation. And so in that case, we have multiple parties who've agreed upon, we, we probably actually understand that we have some differences, but we're mm -hmm. coming to reason together or at least to gain understanding yeah, yeah. we're going to collide and as we yes. collide you will see what bubbles up through the collision right? yes yeah. yes i don't know yeah. about you but one of the things i often do because i because i share how i don't broadcast this stuff unless it's something that's connected to my assignment or whatever mm -hmm. i do love to observe the yeah. conversation mm -hmm. i like to see when things are in conflict I like to see how the body is reacting mm -hmm. to one another in the midst of the conflict, which is why I know, like, to me, this conversation is very important because what I see over and over and over again, especially online, especially online, mm -hmm. even among people who know each other, as well as people who don't know each other, yeah. that it can get really combative. But it wasn't, it's almost like because it was said on social media, it's like assume, okay, well, then this is the invitation for me to engage in, and yeah. in, yeah. in how I disagree with you. Yeah. When that really wasn't the invitation, the person was just sharing their thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so like social media does, because like, because you did post it publicly and there's this little right, comment Right, it's kind of like you're kind of inviting Yeah, you're of. kind of inviting a, a, a dialogue even if you don't want it, right? So, right, right. <laughs> so you almost gotta, I, I've thought about this sometimes from my videos I make, you know, maybe yeah. you should just turn all comments. Like some people do that. They just turn all comments. You can't comment. I'm sharing this. I don't want any other comments on this. Right. You know, right. some people do that. They just turn off the comments. Yes. On it. So I'm famous for my disclaimers and my, yeah, in my I've, I've seen it, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this is the submission piece of the puzzle that we're called yes. to as believers. Yeah. We're not going to agree with everybody. And that's just, just part of the feature of Christianity here. Right. Yes. You're not going to agree. Right. right. It's just so many different and that's things. That's okay. That's okay. And let yes. me show you why you're not going to, that's why, this is why people see things differently. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Okay. And if you can get this revelation, this will make life so much better. And so I call this the revelation that every minister and every person has truth and foolishness in them. You just don't know where they, where is that? <laughs> All right. This is Paul speaking. And this is Paul, the apostle Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but when we see everything with perfect clarity that all that i know now is partial and incomplete but then i will know everything completely just as god now knows me completely so what paul is saying like right now while we're living in the flesh it's like we're looking through a mirror that's tinted we got some light coming through some lights been blocked and it's like a puzzle and we have imperfect information. We've got imperfect yeah. clarity, right? So yes. I have some thoughts inside of me that is spot on right. And I have some thoughts in me that is wrong, completely wrong, right? Yeah. And when I get to heaven, you know, I'll say, oh, I was good there. I was wrong there, right? <laughs> and, you, and you just don't know, you're not going to know which way you are until you actually get there, right? Because we're not in a position to fully see the clarity, right? So, for example, like if you take Shay's mission, for example, Shay has this mission of she has this she want to work uh, with God, not for God. Right. That's a big tenet of the the movement. Right. Yes. There's a possibility when Shay gets to heaven and God's like, that wasn't really that big deal. Right. There's a possibility. Right. You know, Shay, that's, that's that was nice. You did that. 
but it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> a big deal. Right? That drew people close to me, but it wasn't as important as you thought. As, it was. as you thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like, so so it's like stuff like that, right? So it's like we all have these things that we believe God's called to do, things we saw in scripture that might be right, might be wrong. But in this reality, we're not going to really 100% know. The best thing we can do is just get close as we possibly can, right? And so if you realize that level of humility is that even though I'm preaching this, even though I'm trying to share this, I'm still not seeing fully the complete picture anyway, right? right. You know, I, I still only have part pieces of this thing. Yes. Right. And, and this is why we kind of need each other. Right. Because like that's exactly if, I what have I was about piece, <laughs> if you have a piece, we kind of come together, yeah. we kind of get a better image of the thing. Right. Yeah. And that's what a yeah. submission comes in too, Right. I need to know your foolishness means my foolishness meets your truth. Then now we got more truth. Then my yes. truth meets your foolishness. Then, I, then you go with mine. Right. And so <laughs> there's this dance of like, how do we how do we navigate these things? Yes, that's exactly what I was about to say, Amos, because when I think about um just personally, my journey of the last 12 to 15 years or so, it was in the context of community that helped many things be sharpened, where it was mm -hmm. like something I would see and have a level of understanding on, but would grow in greater revelation in the context of community yep. on certain things, whether that community was just me and one other person, or that community was me and a few other people, or whether community was just something that happened in a one-time engagement with one person that then the Holy Spirit illuminated for mm -hmm. me later on. Right. But it's like, it, it's, it's the, um, you were talking about how at, at, while we're in this flesh, there's only so much understanding that we'll have around things yet. It's like a, yeah, there's, there should be, if, when we have humility, mm -hmm. there is a growing understanding that's still not perfect, but it should go from one level of glory to the next, like yeah. one level of understanding to the next yeah. as we do this. But if we, but if we lack humility or we think everything that we know is the thing that everyone else needs to submit to and take that kind of elitist posture, then we're stunting our own growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's the convergence we're talking about. So like, yeah, I, I, when I was a grad student, I remember this example, like take this video footage and you got this license plate of a car and one single image is grainy. Right. Yeah. But if you look at a video footage, video footage has like 30 frames a second or so within 30 frames at different points in the frame, different parts of the license plate is clear. So if I yeah. take all 30 frames, average them together what comes out is a clear license plate right yes. and so if you take you take my truth and my foolishness shakes truth and her foolishness and about a thousand other believers with truth and foolishness we put it all together eventually it averages itself out and what comes out is truth right but that takes a level of submission and humility to kind of hear each other to kind of yeah. that that comes up to the top right yeah, that's and this good. is this is the feature I'm talking about of Christianity. Like, this is our feature here. This is not the error, but this is just how it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And would you would you say that the very feature of this in and of itself is is sharpening us to be more like Christ? Because yeah. in the in the tension of that, we actually have to grow in we have to grow in our ability to be more like him. Yeah. To even navigate that. So yep. it's almost like the feature that by design helps us to be more like him. Yep, exactly. Because we're growing to his standard, right? We're, right. Trying, we're converging to him, not to yeah. each other. So it's, it's convergence that's, right. that's taking place. Yeah, so, that's good. And then another mindset we got to have is like the early church, like even biblical early church, they, they didn't see eye to eye either, right? So it's not, it wasn't this kumbaya moment in the early apostles that they all got it the same mm -hmm. way. So let's look at this interesting scripture here in John 21, 20, 23. Okay. And I want you to see how this plays itself out. And this yep. is Jesus and Peter having, a, Jesus, Peter and John having a conversation. Peter turns around and saw behind the disciple Jesus love, which is John, the one who had leaned over to Jesus doing supper and ass it's interesting john said he's disciple of jesus loves like my little, my little yeah. she always tells me we're her, we're her favorite she's our favorite daughter all of us same kind That's of concept right. right anyway she said lord who will betray you peter asked what about him lord jesus replied if i want him to remain alive until i return what is that to you as for you follow me 
So Jesus gave a clear statement. If I want him to return alive until I return, what is that to you? As for you, follow me. Yes. What did Jesus mean when he say that? Right? Well, let's see how the people interpret what he meant. So the rumor spread among the community of believers that this disciple who was John wouldn't die. So they heard Jesus give that clear English or Greek, whatever how he spoke it. And what they took from it, oh, John was not going to die. <laughs> right? But it goes on. But that's not what Jesus said at all. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until our turn, what is that to you? So they were there with Jesus, heard him say the words, and they took the, the totally the wrong meaning from it. Right? <laughs> right? With so him they, in the flesh. With him in the flesh, right? And what they got from it was, okay, John, you're not going to die. But what Jesus mean was meant, don't worry about what's going on with John. You worry about what's going on with right. you. Right. Worry That's about what, yourself. That was the point. <laughs> <laughs> but he totally missed it, right? So yes. I guess what I'm saying is that if these guys in the room with Jesus can miss it with direct word from him, we're going to yes. do the same thing. So it's not, this is not yes. new. Right? Yes. Yes. This yes. is not no new. Doubt. Right? No, no doubt. This is yeah, not new, good. right? And even the book of Acts in verse, in chapter 15, we see Paul and Barnabas arguing with people about circumcision, right? Mm. And so mm -hmm. the, let's read the first two verses. You can get a feel for this. Okay. While Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch, Assyria, some men from Judea arrived and began to teach believers, unless you are circumcised as required by the law of Moses, you cannot be saved, right? So, get, so you can't be saved unless you're circumcised. Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them, arguing vehemently, Finally, the church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem, accompanied by some local believers, to talk to the apostles and the elders about this question. So, right here, Book of Acts, Jesus just died. We can't agree on what salvation means, <laughs> All right? And so, it's almost like the: Are you saved by grace? You saved by works? Like it's the same right. argument, right? It's like it's not like yes. it's new, right? This is this yes. has been old there argument from the beginning. Right. That's right. And so much so that Paul himself, they're arguing over these issues that they literally have to go create a council and they're discussing, do you got to be circumcised to be saved? <laughs> right. A whole yeah. council. Right. Now, yes. in the book of Acts, they came to the conclusion you don't. But what's interesting, even though the book of Acts came to the conclusion that you don't have to follow the law like that, we still relitigate this stuff. It's like just because it's, quote unquote, settled in scripture, it still never really settles it for people. Right. Mm. And so you see stuff like this in the Bible is like, oh, that's no different than what we're doing now. It's basically the yeah. same kind of thing. Yeah. Right. So so right mindset is this is not new. <laughs> right. This is not new. Right. Yes. And so when you start to realize that this is not new, then that helps you understand and doesn't it doesn't make you as upset. Yes. Right? You know, and, and I'm, I'm a human too. It's like when people are closest to me, when I realize we don't agree on the same points of theology, it does kind of make you feel a certain way. Like, how come sure. you don't see it this way? How come, yeah. I mean, just, even husband wise, like, how can you don't see it the way I see it? How do you see yeah. it differently? And then you pass, you start mm -hmm. to condemn, you pass judgment, not realizing that this is just a feature here. This is how it is. If, if Paul and Barnabas and other disciples who, knew, they all followed Jesus in the room, some of them. They still were yeah. struggling with points of theology. It's, it's not a it's not an internal evilness that's causing this. It just just it just is the feature of it, right? And they converged in the Book of Acts. They did converge, right? They did, yes. Yeah, so they did converge. So, so we can converge too, right? That's right. So you start to see this stuff. Look at Romans fourteen twenty two twenty three. You may believe there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. But get this, but keep it between yourself and God. <laughs> so Paul, Wait, hold on. Read that one again. Read that one again, Amen. All right. You may believe there's nothing wrong with what you're doing, but keep it between yourself and God. <laughs> so which means there's some things that you have freedom on, you have liberty on. You don't need to post on social media how it's okay. You just keep that to yourself. All right. That's what Paul makes said. <laughs> So, so basically, right. he's recognizing there's going to be a lot of stuff you think are cool to do. You don't got to go blast it that I think this is a great idea. I think it's this fine. This goes back to your, the, your comments about how you also don't have to say that you 
disagree. necessarily disagree. Yeah, you right. Kind of the same, same concept. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. Well, I, that's, that's, that's what you think. This is what I think. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep it between me and yeah, God. That's interesting. That's interesting. Right? That's, a, that's what yeah. Horace, you would say. That's, yep, interesting. that's interesting. Right. So it's like, I hear stuff all the time that I don't agree with, sure. but <clears throat> I, I'm not making a video about it unless unless right. I feel like I want to do something with that, right? I don't yeah. shy away from some things, but there's some things. It's like 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 me and you. Show, like you might have a guest on your show, and I might text you probably. I don't think I don't I don't think I see that. Right, right, right. right but right. I'm not gonna make a whole video right how this one guest said this and this like that's interesting. But that's I might right. tell you like you I don't and know I can have the conversation. <laughs> you and I have had some good conversations yeah. behind the scenes around that. Yeah. We have relationship. We've invited mm-hmm. each other into this conversation to like reason with one another around our one or both of ours disagreement around something, you know, that was a conversation that we yeah, had. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so true. So that's a lot of humility as believers that everything you think is right. You don't need to publicize it. Right. Because and some people feel like they, I mean, if I just take tattoos is a great example of this, right. You know, you don't, I mean, of course tattoos are visible, but you don't have to, if you think they're okay, you don't really got to create a whole ministry around trying to convince people tattoos. Are okay. You can just keep right. that between you and God. Right. Yes. I'm going to say the newest, that the one that's at least in my news feed that has been going like wildfire has been around yoga. It oh, has been yeah, a okay, lot okay. Of, yeah. has been a lot of arguments around yeah. whether yoga is satanic or not. Mm-hmm. And people have very, very, very strong, yeah. strong opinions. Yeah about that whether it's someone who had an experience Mm -hmm. because you know when someone has an experience with something personally that creates a deep deep conviction for them right and so oftentimes they're the ones who have the hardest time not being really loud around something because it's connected it's this isn't just like a conversation you know the 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 fun of having conversations with people can you still hear me yeah, I you heard you, but okay. your video froze, but I still heard you. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, this isn't one of those just like, this is just debate for Jess, you know, just mm-hmm. for some fun yeah. conversation. No, someone had a deep, had a personal, life changing, impacting experience, which makes their convictions very strong. Mm-hmm. And when that's the case, it makes it that much tougher and that much more self control to not do all the things that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You got to take a lot of control, right? Because, like, like, and honestly, with yoga, I don't literally have an opinion, right? I don't, I don't really have an opinion because when I don't do it, I, I can see how depending on what version of yoga you're using and how they're doing it, it could lead to demonic activity and, sure. and, and other places just you get exercising. They're like, right? just, just, just exactly. right? there's, there's, there's a spectrum there. Right. But yes. th- that's a good place where if you see somebody post online about how yoga is demonic and you think it's okay, you just, you can just keep that to yourself. You don't have to go refute, refer them. Like that's, that's, that's interesting. But some people feel like they got to go, no, yoga's fine. Yoga's fine. You can do it. You can do it. You can just, you or know, vice you, versa. You what about, well, yoga's it. fine. I'm making that point. And if other people, and if other people want to go in, it happens on both, mm-hmm. on both sides. But I guess you were having this conversation about the weak, the weaker, yeah, it's stronger a weaker thing. thing. So this perhaps applies when you're thinking about this from yeah, your perspective. It's a like, so whoever, so you're, whoever has, the, whoever has more rules, the person who has less rules need to yield. So the one, so the one in this, so in this case, this would be the person who's like, absolutely, no, uh, no yoga. it is demonic, yep. right? And the yeah. person who feels That's okay, why you need to step back. That's the thing yeah, the to assert versus the, mm-hmm. but, but the other scripture is like, if you think something's okay, you don't have to assert, you don't have to necessarily assert it. You can keep it between you and God mm-hmm. either. So it's almost like, like it's thing, on right? both sides of these conversations. Yeah, keep it yourself, right? Yeah. You know, and so. You know, and obviously people, what about, this is talking about believers. Now, as ministers, you know, when you're preaching, yeah. you know, you can preach stuff, but in right, everyday right. believer's life, yeah, the things you think are right, you don't got to go, you can keep that to yourself. You keep yeah. that to yourself, right? Um, and then, because remember, if somebody does something they think is wrong, they are committing sin because you're violating consciousness. So if somebody feels that yoga is wrong, and they do get wrong, younger is wrong. They are sinning. So by definition, if you feel it's wrong, you need to stop doing it, right? It is a sin now to you, right? You know, so like if you feel like your allegiance to your Greek organization is sinful, you have to stop that. It is sinful. If you keep mm-hmm. in it, you're now in sin because your convictions is telling you that you shouldn't be in it anymore. 
right? So you see how this works, right? <laughs> I do. And then I, and then I think about people, um, who so much want, so they're not coming from an argumentative. They're not looking to just like cast shame or anything on, on, on individuals, but they so desire for someone to experience the freedom of, you know, mm -hmm. not having that. So it's like, yeah. yes, that's sent to you, but it doesn't have to be. And mm -hmm. so they're coming from this, from this deep conviction of, I used to be bound, but now I'm free and I mm -hmm. want you to. So some people it's like, they're literally, their heart posture is, I just, I've been there mm -hmm. and I so desire for you to experience something different. A lot of like people who either teach theological or doctrinal things or just everyday peers, you know, yep. in the body of Christ. I think sometimes that's the, that's the deep conviction, not wanting to be in disunity, not wanting to, you know, create unnecessary tension. Some people yeah. do, because it's kind of like, well, mm -hmm. you're wrong, I'm right. Mm -hmm. But some people they're coming from this place of yeah. just like, it's it's almost to them almost like this is ministry to me mm -hmm. because I want you to experience yeah. freedom of belief that that's sin. What yeah. would you say to that person? Be very careful with that. Because if, a, if somebody takes liberty to do something based on your convictions and it's not their convictions, now they're committing sin. Right. So what like, they, what if they're saying, but I'm hoping the Holy spirit will use my words. Yeah. You know, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe it's, it, it all depends on the approach to it. Right. And so, um, like me and tithing, right. I think tithing is not a new covenant, uh, thing to do. And there are people who absolutely believe you got to do it as you curse. Right. And so yes. in some sense, those people may be creating bondage on people right now. So what I do I preach the way I see it, right? Period. I just preach where I see it. And then yes. those people who are attracted to that, they can hear it and they can ask me questions. I get a yes. lot of texts, texts, it's not even right, where I get a lot of text messages from ministers who who may teach tithing, they're asking me questions about it, right? Sure. And I share I share my thoughts about it. So they, they so people are coming to me asking me questions about it because I know yeah. they know I feel this way and they know I used to do it, but I know I don't do it, right? Yeah. And so they're asking yeah. me questions, right? And so there's a, but as ministers of the gospel, this place where we teach stuff, we share, I mean, make sure you use scriptures while you say it as okay, right? Because if I just think it's wrong and I don't have any proof, then it's just my opinion. So as ministers, I teach people, like, make sure you're using the word to show your train of thought here, right? Uh -huh. And then that'll attract people to hear you, right? Um, Would you say the same thing to someone who's not a pastor? Like somebody, just, somebody, somebody, somebody who's here. not a pastor or a teacher or a teacher. I was like, why, why you, why you want to do this? Right. <laughs> You're like, like, I'll was, go back to the other scripture. <laughs> yeah, because remember the Bible says those not many people should be teachers. Cause we're going to be held to a higher standard. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, like, why do you feel like you want to step in that space? So, so Paul is saying that for, for most believers, there are some uh -huh. things that we have freedom in and we literally need to keep to ourselves. Mm. <laughs> this is a good conversation, man. Right. Right. And that, that takes a mission, right? That, ta that takes a level because we all want to kind of screen to the rooftop, the things we have freedom in. Right. But that can cause your brother to stumble. Mm -hmm. Whole point. You, we, we're, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about the person that's going to hear this. Right. By me saying this, is this going to cause you to stumble or not? Right. If I'm telling you that yoga is okay and you're struggling with it, and you, you don't know how to handle that without enough teaching, enough relationship where we can kind of walk through it together. I may be doing your disservice anyway. Mm. Right. Mm. So we got to be very careful with that. Very careful with that. So it's almost like, you know, we talk about the, the beauty of relational equity with people mm -hmm. is that, you know, you have, you, you have, have that in someone's life or whatever, but even in that context, being led by the spirit of God and how you engage that if you, cause, cause like you said, if you are a teacher or a pastor or whatever, then you consistently platform your teachings yeah. or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. folks that that's not the case with, this is just kind of every day. Mm -hmm. Then God may use you in a moment yeah. to have a conversation that will, you know, in partnership with him, yeah. will yeah. actually release freedom, release mm -hmm. goodness, whatever in that scenario. Yeah. But I guess that's, so your be, your be careful about that. My, my 
when I hear that, my thought is be careful around that is be led by the spirit in that because mm -hmm. you don't want to miss an opportunity that God may desire to do something yeah. because you, you there is a relationship there. Yep. And at the same time, you don't want to assert your will into the, into the either. dialogue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so issues like this is easy to spot when the Holy Spirit getting open because most people just come ask, like, what do you think about this? Great opportunity. Let me tell you why I think about this. Right now, as a minister, like I have a thought about uh, pledging, right? In, right? in brief terms, I, I have a I have a thought process about it. Mm -hmm. I haven't publicly said how I felt about it because I haven't done actual teaching on it, right? So me just telling you how I feel about it could create too much confusion. So for me to speak on that issue is going to be some Bible study. Let's go to some right. scriptures here. Let me show you why I'm thinking this. Then that that's how I approach it. Versus yes. I just tell you my thoughts on it. No context, no scripture basis. I'm injecting confusion into the dialogue. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm That's good. Into the dialogue, right? So, yes. That would be good stewardship of your, <laughs> of, of your role there. James. Right? <laughs> right? So, so we got to be really careful with that. It's like, it's like, I, I have this thing where I don't make rules where God didn't make rules. That's my, that's my thought. <laughs> if there is no, yeah. no rule in the scripture, I'm not making one. I might think there yeah. should be one there. But I'm not making <laughs> one. <laughs> if I was writing if this, I, if you had asked me, I might have did it differently, but you said you didn't ask the me. Amos trans, the, a, the AJV <laughs> version <laughs> yep, yep. would have said. Yep. So let me show right. you this other, other thing about another way to approach these things. Second Timothy sure. 2 14. And this is okay. something I had to kind of learn not to do. When Paul is talking to Timothy, remember these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearer. So what mm. Paul is talking about, he says, don't quarrel about words. He's talking about definitions of words. You ever, you've probably seen this before. Somebody reads scripture, they look up their Strong's concordant, where in the Greek, it has all these different meanings and they yeah. pick one meaning they like, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right. And so I've learned, don't do that. So, so, so basically if somebody comes to me and like, Hey, you know, like, for example, let's take, uh, let's take uh divorce in Malachi. Yeah. The Bible says God hates divorce. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of just taking it as that, but people say, well, actually that word divorce in the, in the Hebrew actually means separation and the separation actually means something else from another definition and so, so instead of just taking for what it says, they got to go deep into the Greek, deep into the Hebrew, and look at all the definitions and translations and try to find another word that they like better, right? <laughs> and so, so, so Paul is saying, don't do that, right? <laughs> so when we're quarreling over definitions and meanings of words, what he says is that it does no good, but only ruins the hearer. So mm. when people hear us going back and forth over definitions, of terms, it, it you know sometimes you gotta do some definition. You gotta look at what, what does this mean. But yeah, I'm, like, I'm a word nerd. I yeah. like to look up what the, yeah. I want to know what what the words yeah. mean. Because frankly, aim is for. But this isn't something I argue about. Yeah. But I have found that there's been times that it's because I did that got in that that Greek or that Hebrew, and and then and then I, then that would lead me to other translations, and I realized other translations use this other word that was actually way better. Get, if, you know, if you mm -hmm. looked at the Hebrew word, that would have been a way better choice. What it actually changes how you receive that particular sentence. Yep. So like for me, I'm like, I, I'm not looking to quarrel about words, the but Hebrew I care word. about them. Yeah. I care about the words. Theologians yes. quarrel about words. That's why it's multiple translations and using different words, right? Yes. <laughs> so they'll take a word. Uh, let's take the word. Uh, Paul says that the husband is head of the wife. Right. They'll say, well, what does the word head mean? And right. We say, well, head means authority or whatever. So no, no, head means source in the Greek. And source in the Greek means flow from, not authority over. And now we're arguing over the definition of what does head mean. Right. 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 <laughs> and so right. and so what Paul is saying, well, that doesn't help the hearers. It actually ruins the hearers. So mm. as Bible teachers, we got to be very careful about arguing over definitions of words to prove our points here. And so, so what I do, instead of arguing over words, I look for common themes that may support yeah. something, a, a principle yeah. versus like, I take a single scripture, look at the Strong's, look at all definitions, pick the one I like and then insert right. it. 
And now I got a teaching without any support other than I'm not arguing over, you know, people say, well, they mistranslate the Bible. Now, that's usually the next thing. They mistranslate this word. It should right. have been this. It was, this was a yeah. better word usage. Right. And right. this is where we this is this is the back and forth that Paul saying does no good to the hearers. Now, let me ask you this. So that says does no good to hearers. So would you say as a as a minister that that could be helpful iron sharpening dialogue to be having peer to peer, just not publicly yeah, arguing that could be good against peer -to -peer. each other? Because otherwise that's the otherwise there's no hearers if it's private. Yeah. That's so like, so that could be sharpening. That could be sharpening for public, for public, public. So we want to yeah. argue over definitions, not argue, but we want to discuss, discuss what this word means between us. We can come yes. to a consensus, but the public debate over, cause like you could take any scripture and get theological very size of it. And that debate sure. back and forth does no good to the hearers. Right. 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 right? right. It yeah, does yeah. no good. Right. And so yeah. you're not going to prove your point by finding the right definition that you like better to prove a point. So Paul's saying that's not, that's not helpful. Right. Got and so, it. Yes. and so that's tough because we want to be right. And we, sure. when we gravitate on a word choice. Oh, okay. And a lot of times the right word choice fits our already preconceived notion, what we think it should be anyway. It's a confirmation. It's bias. a confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's like, yes. well, bad doesn't really mean bad. If you go back to 1982, Ron <laughs> didn't say bad not being bad not being good. So we kind of changed the definitions in 82. And so really what this really meant was. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. So that could be fun conversation to sharpen one another, but yeah. not to be quarreling about. Yeah, so not be quarreling about. Um, yeah, that's and then, good. And a couple more mindsets we just roll down here is yeah. let's look at the new commandment. John okay. 13, 34, 35. Mm -hmm. A new commandment I give you that you love one another as I loved you so that you love one another by this shall men know that you're my disciples. If you love one another. Yeah. So really and truly the whole game here is how do we relate to each other? That's right. right. The game is not how we relate, relate to unbelievers. Some, some people, this is me inserting my thought process here too. A lot okay. of people think that we're going to be looked better on by Jesus, but how well we treat those who are not in our camp or those who are non-believers. So a lot of people do a lot of loving towards non-believers, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't love internally, mm. right? And this mm -hmm. is where Jesus is saying, we need, to, we need to do the internal love more than we do the external love, right? Because the internal love is a sign that you're my believers, right? That's <laughs> what he said, right? Multiple times. Multiple times, right? So it's almost like you're in a family, but you hate your brother and sister, but you like your friends. You know what I'm saying? That's literally what Jesus is saying, right? You know, it's you gotta yeah. do this internally. This is this is the sign. Yeah. How well we do this internally, yes. right? Yes. Matthew 7, 21, 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven, many will say in this day. Now I want you to listen to these things that, that's not gonna get you in heaven. Lord, we <laughs> prophesy in your name, we cast out devils, and in my name we, you've done many wonderful works. Then I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work iniquity. So, and I'm, I'm going to, so in this particular case, this is talking more towards the charismatic side of Christianity. Like, <laughs> you know, we prophesied, we cast out the devils, we did the miracle stuff. We did all this external stuff that was spectacular. And Jesus was like, that doesn't really matter. Right? <laughs> that, that doesn't even matter, right? And now let's go to the book of Revelation. We'll see from the other side. Revelation 2, okay. two to 4. Revelation 2, 2 to 5, New Living Translation. I know the things you do. I've seen your hand, hard work, and your patient endurance. I know that you don't tolerate evil people. Now it's talking about people who are doing immoral stuff. You have mm -hmm. examined the claims of those who are apostles and say they're not. You know, people always are heresy hunters, right? You know, that's false teacher yeah. there, false teacher there. You've totally. discovered yeah. they're liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting, which is okay, great. You know, you're calling folks out who did stuff. Maybe it's wrong. Okay, that's nice. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. So it's mm. almost like you did all this right doctrine stuff and calling folks out, but Hey, that's not the point. You, you don't love me or each other anymore. Right? Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I'm coming to remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Right? So we got two extremes. We got the charismatics. I mean, we did all this great stuff. 
And then we got, let's call them the reform camp. I'm just using names. You can say Presbyterian, right. Lutherans, whatever. They do, yeah. they do all the right doctrine stuff. And Jesus like, none of that's matter. <laughs> how are y'all loving each other? How did other? you love each other? <laughs> right. Not that it's not important, but how y'all love each right. other? It's, right? all, it's important. <laughs> right. We're not saying he doesn't love it. He's like, yeah. I see you. Yeah. I see you. But how do you love each other? However, mm-hmm. how did you love one another? Yeah. So, so like I'm saying, like, this is the whole game, right? The game is yes. how are we doing this each other thing, right? Yeah. You, are you loving each other? And then in this last set of scripture here, I'm not going to read this so long. Matthew 25, 34 to 46 gives a very interesting account of Judgment Day. So on Judgment mm-hmm. Day, he's going to put people on the right side and the left side. And on the right side, he's going to say, enter into the kingdom of God. He says, mm-hmm. when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you invited you home. I was naked, you clothed me, right? I was sick, you cared for me. I was in prison, you visit me. And then they'll say, Lord, when do we do all these things to you? Verse 40 is the key verse here. And the king will say, I tell the truth. When you did this one to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. So it's about how are you treating your brothers and sisters? I think an error that some people make is they use the word least of these and they're thinking outside of the camp. I was just about to say they're that. outside yeah. the camp. No, but Jesus yeah. talking about inside the camp, right? <laughs> right. So that's why he says your brothers and sisters. He's not talking about those outside of here. How have you treated the people in here? Right. And then he goes to the next group and like, you didn't visit me. You didn't come see me. You didn't feed me. And they said, when did we didn't do this? In verse 45, when you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you refuse to help me. So it's all about how <clears throat> are we treating each other? Not how you're treating the world. Not, not saying you shouldn't treat the world good. But right. That's not the measuring stick, right? We should do that stuff. We, we're not saying be mean to people who are unbelievers and all that stuff. But if you're being nice to unbelievers to be mean to the in crowd, you're missing the point. The yeah. least of these are us. If Because he said oh. it's the evidence. Mm-hmm. And John, I can't remember where it was, John 15, somewhere around there. Yeah. That they'll know that you're my disciples. It's like, that's the evidence. Mm -hmm. So to someone who doesn't believe, so how much more, you think about this, I know we got to go, but it's like, when you think about some of the issues that happen with people who either fall away from faith Mm -hmm. or are, or aren't interested in the faith and stuff like that. A lot of times when you pinpoint some of that stuff, it's really because of how believers are with one another. Mm -hmm. That's it. So it's like, so if we do the thing that Jesus said, which he said is the evidence, Mm -hmm. then how much more is that an expression of the goodness and the glory of God that, that Jesus expressed through us to people around us? That's attractive. That's attractive, right? That's attractive. So if we had supposed to being like, let me just go get all the, let me go be as kind of go the least of these around, around all those who, who don't believe, mm-hmm. all, which is all good. It's all we're good. Not saying, yeah, I'm not saying we don't do it's that. It's all good. We yeah. love it. Mm-hmm. Jesus loves it. We love it too. But doing that despite the that's eternal, where we get it right? wrong. So if, if, if I'm reaching the people outside the camp, telling about Christianity, then they look inside the camp and they see fighting and distrust right. and bite bite. They don't want to be a part of Christ. Yes. Right. Right. So it's attractive to the world to see us as believers get along. Yeah. That's what's attractive. Yes. That's, even with our differences. Even with our differences. Right. So remember submission yes. doesn't mean agreement. So like That's right. for, for a non-believer to see a group of people of varying different backgrounds and belief system, coexist in the same space around a unification around Jesus Christ, the son of God, yes. that's attractive. Yeah. That exists nowhere in the world. Right? Yes. Come on. <laughs> this was indeed kingdom over everything. <laughs> right? that, that, that's the whole point, right? That's the whole point. So like, it's, it's, we can just figure the internal thing. A lot yes. of other stuff is falling fall in place. Like in the book of Acts, the apostles were preaching the gospel. Yes. And then there was an argument in the camp among the Hebrew speaking women's women and the Greek speaking women's. And you know what the Paul said, dude, they had to stop preaching the word to figure out how they're going to distribute few, the food fairly. And once yes. they figured out how to dis- distribute food fairly, it says the believers increased greatly because they figured mm. out the food program. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Oh my gosh. Amos, this was really good stuff. I loved this conversation. I love it. Did we did we ca- did we capture all uh all your core points there on my Yeah, we, we, we got all the core points. And good. The last point here, uh yeah. nine, thirty-eight to forty. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone using your name, casting out demons, but we told them to stop because they wasn't in our group. Don't stop them, Jesus said. No one who performs a miracle in my name will soon be able to speak evil against me. Anyone who's not against us is for us. So if there's basically this teaching here is that if you see another group of believers who are doing stuff for Jesus or with Jesus, what Jesus is saying, if they're doing it for me, over time, they'll come to the point they can't speak evil to me, right? They'll, they'll converge mm-hmm. with us, right? Mm-hmm. So, so as one group of believers with a certain set of doctrine, you see another right. group of believers with another set of doctrines, and you kind of say, they're not with us. Let's tell them to stop. Jesus yeah. might like, leave him alone. Just leave him alone. It'll converge. It'll converge. So That's I think we got to take the pressure off our shoulders that we're not here yeah. to release the body of Christ. You know, you got a certain revelation. You got a certain message. Preach it. Yes. Preach it. With the understanding that there's probably some foolishness in there too. But go ahead and <laughs> preach it, right? Yes. It'll collide. It'll converge. Give it time. I love it. That's good (laughs) stuff, Amos. All right. So folks who want to connect more and and hear what you are teaching in your digital church and all of those things, where do they go? Let's go to uh, faithcommunity.io and you get there. The community is open for you to kind of explore our teaching, our resources. If you can join us in two ways, one way you can join us as just a community member. You don't have to say this, your church or anything like that. You just, I'm just here. Another way you can join us, like, hey, you know what? This is my church home. You know, I want to be here. So we have members who actually live next to me next door. And we have members who live in Canada and Sweden and everywhere else too. So Nice. And you are also in Atlanta for yeah, those who we're are. We're in Atlanta for those who are in Atlanta. We meet every Sunday in Atlanta at 10 o'clock in the morning on Sundays in a city called Smyrna, Georgia. So inside awesome. the community, go to our um, calendar and you'll see the location information there. Good stuff. Amos, always good talking to you. Thanks for coming back on the show. Thanks, Shay.